Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the DIY Kit Mark II, a benchtop diode laser from Algo Laser. This entry-level laser claims precision made simple. The DIY Kit Mark II comes with pre-created sample projects that you can start from the full color touchscreen, so you can power on the laser and start your first cut in seconds. An Algo Laser claims it is perfect for both beginners and pros, due to its support for the easy-to-use mobile app to the full power of Lightburn. So let's put the DIY Kit Mark II to the test and see if this is the entry-level laser engraver for you. Before we begin, this Mark II was provided for me to review by Algo Laser. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The Algo Laser DIY Kit Mark II is a benchtop diode laser engraver. It comes in three different models, a 5 watt laser, a 10 watt laser, and a 20 watt laser. I have the 10 watt version today, but you can go for the higher or lower power versions depending on your needs. It is a diode laser that produces a 455 nanometer wavelength visible blue light. Diode lasers are great for working with materials like woods, dark acrylics, slate, and leather. Diode lasers do not work with clear or transparent materials like clear acrylic or glass. Starting with the laser module, we see the cables and the LED status lights up top. The fan underneath blows through the module to cool the diodes, as well as help blow away smoke and soot. At the bottom we see the transparent red cover that helps to block reflected laser light, as well as providing good visibility to help position the laser. There is no separate positioning light on the DIY Mark II, so you'll have to eyeball the position over your material using the nozzle. Thankfully, the nozzle is directly in the middle of the module, which makes it easy to align. The cover is magnetic, making it easy to remove so you can clean it and the lens. The 10 watt version comes with the Air Assist nozzle installed already. Air Assist blows compressed air through the nozzle, which improves cutting performance on materials like wood, and helps to clear away smoke and fumes, keeping your cut edges cleaner. I highly recommend using Air Assist on any laser. However, the 10 watt machine only kit does not include an Air Assist compressor. If you aren't using Air Assist, be sure to remove this nozzle, otherwise you might damage the lens. I use my own non-algo laser air compressor for my tests, as I consider Air Assist essential. The laser module is attached to the gantry, which is made from extruded aluminum. The X and Y axes are belt driven and use rubber V-slot wheels. I love that the Y axis motor is connected to a rod that travels the full length to both sides allowing both sides to be belt driven. This prevents any racking or skew that you might sometimes see in entry-level lasers. There are two end stops that allow the laser to home to the front left. The DIY Kit Mark II has a work area of 400mm by 435mm. It can be extended to 400mm by 880mm using the optional extension kit. The star of the show is the front control panel. This 3.5 inch full color touchscreen panel allows you to interact with the Algo OS, a pretty slick UI for the laser. Not only does it let you move the laser, but it also lets you create designs directly on the laser without the need for a computer. It has a number of built-in example projects already on the laser. You just need to select your material thickness and laser power, and it handles the rest. This tree man project cut perfectly, all done on the laser without ever connecting it to my computer. Most lasers allow offline engraving by saving a G-code file to the SD card, but the Algo OS allows you to go one step further. It not only works with pre-made G-code files, but almost any file type. Want to engrave a picture? Just save the picture to a USB drive or the internal SD card, and adjust the engraving settings on the touchscreen. Have an SVG file to cut? Just save it to the SD card and use the touchscreen to cut it. This is extremely user-friendly, and I'm pretty impressed by the versatility of it. You can, of course, connect the DIY Mark II to your computer for full control of the laser. All of the I.O. can be found on the left side of the control panel. A USB Type-A port for the USB drive, a USB Type-C for connecting to your computer, an I.O. port for connecting to other accessories, and the 24 volt power supply. The DIY Kit Mark II does not come with any honeycomb panel or metal sheet to protect your workbench. I would highly recommend purchasing a honeycomb panel, as that gives you a stable surface to cut on and allows room under your material for ventilation. I use my own non-algo laser honeycomb panel for all of my tests. The DIY Kit Mark II can be paired with many optional accessories. Besides the air assist compressor and honeycomb table I previously mentioned, the rotary chucks and rollers allow you to engrave on round and cylindrical objects. A camera can be added to display your work area within Lightburn to make positioning your designs a breeze. And the smart enclosure has the camera and lighting, as well as built-in exhaust fan for easy fume extraction. So even if you just purchased the DIY Kit Mark II today, you can extend its capabilities in the future as you need it. The DIY Kit Mark II needed to be assembled. The instructions do a great job of walking you through all of the steps needed. First you screw together the frame, then slide on the pre-assembled X gantry. Then you thread the belts through. A couple of screws attached to the front panel, and then 
then you just need to plug in the cables. It was a pretty easy assembly. It took me about 40 minutes to complete. You can use the USB connection to control the laser from your computer. The DIY Kit Mark II can use any Gerbil compatible software like Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. The manual steps are a little sparse on how to install the software, but it does walk through the settings needed for the DIY Kit Mark II. I am a huge fan of Lightburn, so most of my testing was done with that. It's truly worth the license cost for anyone with a laser cutter. Algo Laser also has a mobile app for iOS and Android, and it's just as user-friendly as a touchscreen. Simply connect to the laser on your Wi-Fi network, and then you can create designs, adjust settings, and start cutting directly from your phone. It was easy to select and cut this lobster, and this picture of me turned out well, even though I had the power slightly too high. I only ran into one small issue when using the mobile app. After finishing a cut, the end position becomes the new 00, zero origin. So if you make another design immediately after, and you try to position it, it doesn't frame where you expect it to. And clicking home doesn't reset the origin. You have to home, and then click reset. It's a small thing, and once you figure it out, it's not really a big deal, but it did trip me up the first time. Otherwise, I had a great experience with a mobile app. So let's take a look at how well the Algo Laser cuts and engraves. Wood is the bread and butter of diode lasers, and it was easy to dial in settings for cutting and engraving. With the Air Assist, I was cutting 3mm plywood at 350mm per minute. That makes the DIY Kit Mark II one of the fastest cutting 10 watt lasers that I've tested. I'm pretty impressed. The laser is also very well focused. My kerf tests showed a kerf offset of only 0.05mm. That very small laser dot not only helps with cutting, but also helps with engraving accuracy. This picture of my dog Jack looks great. This living hinge, cut directly off of an SVG on the SD card, turned out great. Very accurate cuts with very little darkening around the edges. While diode lasers cannot cut clear acrylic, it works very well on opaque acrylics. This 3D print log keychain has a beautiful high contrast white engraving and cut very cleanly. I was cutting this 3mm black acrylic at 300mm per minute in two passes. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of slate coasters, and the DIY Kit Mark II did an excellent job with engraving the slates. The DIY Kit Mark II also handled leather perfectly. With Air Assist, this pattern engraved cleanly with no darkening around the edges. This coated aluminum card also turned out well on the DIY Kit Mark II. While it can't engrave aluminum directly, it can remove any coatings, and it did so at a decent speed with great accuracy. And last but not least is stainless steel. By varying the power and line interval, you can achieve a large variety of colors on stainless steel. Beautiful blues, purples, and oranges on the stainless steel business card. I only ran into a couple of small issues during my tests. No USB stick was included, and none of the four USB sticks that I had on hand seemed to be recognized by the laser. Even after a fresh FAT32 format, the USB drives were not recognized. In order to test creating designs directly on the touchscreen in Algo OS, I had to use the laser's virtual USB capability, which allows your computer to treat the USB cable like it was a USB device. That's a cool feature, but also kind of defeats the purpose of not being connected to a computer. The second issue was with some out-of-bound errors when using the Start From Current Position Job Origin. I'm used to moving the laser manually where I want the cut to start, and using the Start From Current Position to begin. However, if you use the start from current position with the origin in the middle or top rows, the laser will throw an error about being out of bounds. The laser must have software-defined end stops to prevent you from moving the laser outside of the work area, and it's getting tripped up. I had to use Lightburn to move the laser into the middle first, and then I can use the start from current position workflow. In conclusion, I am very impressed by the Algo Laser DIY Kit 2 laser cutter. The speed was impressive for a 10 watt diode laser. The beam is very finely focused allowing for those fast speeds and accurate engravings. I like how they implemented Algo OS, being able to not only control the laser using the touchscreen, but to create entire projects without needing a computer was awesome to see. That is an innovation that sets the Algo laser apart from the competition. Although I did run into the issue where none of my USB sticks were being detected. The mobile app is just as easy to use, and you always have the full power of Lightburn for any more involved designs. A variety of optional accessories is also great to see. You can buy the base machine, and then expand your capabilities as you need to down the line. The Algo Laser DIY Kit Mark II 10 watt version is on sale for $299 US dollars at the time of recording. They do sell all the various optional accessories as bundles, so you can get a discount if you bundle together the rotary attachments, honeycomb panels, and enclosures. At the very least, I would recommend purchasing the honeycomb panel for $99, and the air assist compressor for $79. But this is an incredibly low price for a 10 watt diode laser. If you are wanting to dip your toes into laser engraving and want a solid starting laser that won't break the bank, then I could recommend the Algo Laser DIY Kit Mark II. 
So thank you all for watching my review of the Algo Laser DIY Kit Mark II. What was your favorite features? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And I have many upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on those videos. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.